Hi, hey, ladies. How you doing? Get you guys together. I just have to put it forward. Whack it, and then it'll like work a little better. Oh. Uh, We're just like the ladies in waiting here behind you. Yeah, Alright. So okay. Here we go. Check one, two, three for recording purposes. If I get each of your names. Moira Wally Beckett. Amy Beth McNulty. Miranda DePoncier. Let's do this coming out in three, two, one. Look, before we started recording, what were you whacking for a second? Okay, it's a lot of dress. It's a lot of material. It's lot just everywhere. So I have to like come forward and like whack it down. She's leaving a little sparkly trail like all a, along the red carpet. I feel like a snail who's like leaving a little trail as they go I'll by. I'll know where to so find bad. her well, you know, all the, night. The trail that you guys are leading, though, is great programming. Congratulations on the series. When you're reinventing something like this, how do you know? I mean, we love the story. But how do you reinvent something to make sure that we still continuously like it? Well, the topical issues that we're addressing on the show are all kind of built into Ella Montgomery's story. You know, it's a story about someone who was considered other, who came from away, who, and there was prejudice against her. And so we sort of, I just sort of took that ball and ran with it and was able to then, you know, dig deeper into the spine of the story and allow for diversity and inclusion in some really refreshing ways. When you know you're taking on an iconic role like this, I mean, what were your thoughts? I think I was a little bit nervous at first, and then I just kind of came to the realization that, like, other people have portrayed her. I'm going to do my own spin on it, and if people don't like it, that's okay. They don't have to watch it, and if they do like it, that's amazing. Um, and I just came to the conclusion that I'll just do it, and that's all I can do. And now we're here, so they go too badly. <laughs> So what can we expect you now? More episodes? Another season? No? Oh. You know, well, we're not really, you know, we can't talk about season three because we've just started shooting, but, you know, more and the writers are really always tapping in every every season to what are the issues relevant today, what are issues that are relevant to Canadians in the world, and how do we make this a story that feels contemporary. So, so we hope and are very excited to be, you know, getting ready for this season. We are all excited. Look, have fun tonight. Congratulations on the success. See you guys soon. See you soon. Thank you. Bye. And, and for everyone here, come on in. Um, it, why, why was it important to tell this story again? Canadians, we're very familiar with this story. It's in 191 countries, not everyone is, but why is it important to, to bring Anne back? I mean, I mean, really, for us, it was about, um, uh, uh, you know, finding uh, a Canadian story that could be on a global scale. But, we, you know, everyone knows Anne of Green Gables, and, and there's, no, there's no sense in, in telling another version of Anna Green Gables unless it's going to be fresh and relevant and speaks to today. So, you know, uh, uh, Moira, <laughs> you know, I, I think, I mean, I think, you know, that, that was why it was important. Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, I never want to tread ground that's been walked upon before. And um, all of the themes are, that are inherent in the book are relevant and topical and timeless today. So it was really appealing to me to um, to delve into those, to open the spine of the book, and to also look at life in PEI and in Canada at that time and tell the story realistically. The verisimilitude was really important to me, and it's Canada is a diverse nation, and uh, so to be able to make this drama inclusive and representational um, was really exciting. We just have time for a couple of questions from the Assemble Press. Are there questions? Go ahead. Um, I think it, it, it's 
also in regard to me evolving along with her. Um, I, I started the show when I was 14, I'm 17 now. Um, Anne was 13 when we begun, she's turning 16 in season 3, and I think it's an incredible journey to go along with her, and her resilience never shifted. It simply grew, and it has expanded, um, and she's growing more powerful and more sure in herself and her family and her surroundings and her background, and, and yeah, she's still as curious as she is about the world, but she knows so much now, um, and she's much more sure of herself, which is so lovely to watch and to create. I love it. Last question from Rudy Blair. First, congratulations on all this. Um, I'm just curious, though, if you could take this character and bring her today, in today's world, what's going on with women, how do you think you would write it, and how do you think you would want to act? Well, we're kind of bringing today to 1899, mm -hmm. and as you'll see in season three, we're really going to explore a lot of these topics and a lot of these um, issues that are happening right now. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your evening. We'll, Thank we'll you. uh, take you off this week. Be careful. Thanks.